Today on Pelicas with the Bros, we reviewed the movie Barbarian, and we have a couple questions that need to be answered. Like, is Barbarian a satire on horror films? Who is Barbarian meant for? All that and more will be answered today on Pelicas with the Bros. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? And welcome, everybody, to the show. This is Billy Close with the Bros. My name is Adrian. My name is Ivan. And Billy Close with the Bros is a show where me and my brother Ivan discuss movies every week. We discuss a new movie. Ivan, what's the movie of the week? Barbarian. Barbarian. But before we get into that, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Like I said, this is Billy Close with the Bros. We're a podcast, a show where me and my brother Ivan discuss a movie. So if you'd like to listen to two guys, two brothers, discuss a movie every week, you're in uh the right place as they say uh we're on youtube and we're on uh all podcast platforms so if you want to see us visually go to youtube look us up look us with the bros if you want to listen to us audially audiotorially audiotorially uh go to any podcast podcast platform of your choice uh we're on everything. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Deezer, uh SoundCloud, stuff like that. So if you like podcasts, you can look us up it goes with the bros. And that is it. Uh, but now, Ivan, are you ready? Are you ready to go to an Airbnb and um, basically die? Yeah. All right. Well, you came for the right place. Uh, Barbarian is the movie of the week, directed by Zach Krieger, or Krieger, um, written by Zach Krieger. The premise of the movie: We love Airbnb, right? Never use one. An app that lets you book a night at a house for a price cheaper than a hotel. What a great service this is. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure, the house can have an underground tunnel <laughs> where a mutated woman with what? the power of the 10 men and her psychotic serial killer father live in an inhuman-like conditions. But that's the price we're willing to pay to take when you're getting a house for the low. With the cast of Georgina Campbell as Tess Marshall, Bill Skarsgård as Keith Toshko, Justin Long as A.J. Gilbride, uh, Matthew Patrick Davis as the mother, and Richard Brake as Frank Ivan Zach Krieger hmm. is the director and writer of this film. Uh, let's talk about him a little bit. I got some um, some deets on the guy. First time director. I could tell. Not ta- not direct. Uh, sorry. You kind of ruined my train of thought. Not correctly his first time uh, making a movie, but he, he's he been, uh, he started his um, career as a comedian. He was part of a comedy troupe. I think they're called, yeah, they're called White, Whitest Kids You Know. Oh my God. They had a show on the IFC channel from 2007, 2011. <sighs> they made a movie called Miss March, which was, uh, according to all accounts, a horrible movie. Uh, it's a comedy road trip type of movie. Um, but even the people that made it make fun of it now. But he's been in a bunch of sitcoms that you probably haven't watched and I haven't watched either. I'm not a fan of sitcoms. Office? No. I, I mean, I shouldn't say that, right? That's, yeah, you shouldn't. That's like saying I don't like white people. Even worse than that, honestly. I don't like most sitcoms. All right. I don't like most white people. What's the difference, you racist? That's true. Ivan brings up some good points. Well, if you, like, out of the... You're not a sitcomer. Out of the 10 sitcoms that come out a year, I don't think a lot of people like all 10, right? I don't think a lot of people like one of them. I mean, I feel like sitcom is so, like, out of use now just because, like, Everything is kind of a mesh of everything. Like Succession is a comedy drama. It's a sitcom, but it's like a, a thriller. Is it a sick? Wait, what's a sick? What's sit in? Situational comedy. Oh. That's it funny. is like you're in a situation that's funny. Like it's their situation. But it's like nothing's huh. just a drama anymore. So Succession is a sitcom. Well, sitcom is has such of like a negative connotation where you think of like the laugh track, the very basic, uh, what is it like a staged play esque looking feel, you know? 
where maybe Succession can't be a sitcom because it's in the real world and not The Office. That's kind of like that's true. That is real world. So is that a sitcom or is that? I just I think there's like no more definition. Yeah, that's back to your point, your original point. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so he did a lot of sitcoms. He did a he was in the comedy troupe as uh, as I mentioned. He made a random movie with his uh, one of his best friends. But now, flash forward, uh, I believe like five or ten years later, and he's making this film. And uh, let's talk about it. Let's uh, look at how the sausage was made. So Ivan, turn on that sausage maker. Click. <laughs> you have to make the noise. It's silent. Oh. It's grease now. Okay. Uh, he turned down the sausage maker. Get your, um, what is it? The links. Your sausage link. He's holding so it. So it's already made. He's holding it in his hand. And uh, now we have to put the sausage in the sausage link. So get oh. the, go get the pig. Those go get the casing then. Oh. Sausage casing. He, ha- he has the sausage casing. Go get the shaved pig. The pig is, is it dead? It's uh, squirming, so I'm like... But it's not making any noises? I put an apple in its mouth. Okay. So we're going to have apple-flavored uh, apple sausage? Apple-smoked. Apple-smoked? Yes. Okay. Uh, he has the pig in his hand with the apple in the pig's mouth. And now put that bad boy in the sausage maker. Head first. Head first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you killed it? <laughs> Just well, like stabbed I, it? It has to be quick. I'm humane about this. So, like, on the sausage maker, there's, like, probably a big knife just sticking out. So, you kill it first, and then you I'm put it in. I'm thinking, like, it's a funnel, right? Yeah. So like, a squared funnel. Yes. The bottom is, like, the gears for the, the yes. grinding. And then, like, on the side panel, it's, like, two prongs. Yes. Just, like, long enough, I'd say, like, finger length. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that it's hurt me. a little barbaric. Oh, barbarian! Yes. yes. Okay, so you killed the pig <laughs> and you grinded it, and now we're gonna <laughs> look. <laughs> what if that's just like, uh, you know how there's like people that are in like, uh, this is bad, but like in Asia, they're just good at like making the the things because like they're factory workers, right? Mm-hmm. So like they grab the pig and they're like very swift on how they kill the pig. <laughs> like doesn't even know. She like a football. <laughs> Stamp it. <laughs> they have those guns for cows. It's like just yes, bolt like a nail gun. Yeah, humane. That's what they say. But when is murder humane? I ask of you. When the other person's hungry. <laughs> Barbarian. How the movie was made. Um. So our boy Zach Krieger, Krieger, he read a book called The Gift of Fear, and essentially the book talks about like how fear helps you in certain situations. And he he was reading a part where uh, people give off red flags and, and women primarily, they need to always be aware of these red flags Mm -hmm. because they're unfortunately the weaker sex Mm -hmm. physically. So they need to be always aware and men tend to take, try to take advantage of that. And he thought it was uh, interesting the idea of like how women always have to be on pins and needles essentially a revelation a revelation the revelation like the bible you know my favorite book of all time and <laughs> he sort of uh spitballed the script from there seems like the script was more of like a uh a manic writing session than an actual like i've had this idea for years mm-hmm uh, he got an idea and it just spitballed from there. Uh, he tried to pitch the movie to a bunch of studios. They, a bunch of them said no. Eventually, he got it financed. But a weird story is that he was about to fly off to Bulgaria, where this film was uh, set to be filmed, and his financer died independently. Finance uh, guy, he died. And he's like, damn, there goes the movie. Mm-hmm. Regal calls up and they're like, we'll do it, baby. <laughs> Here's the money. Put that in your fat mouth and go make us a movie. And we get this film, Ivan. Hmm. Now, before we get into the film, though, I do want to give a bunch of uh, a spoiler alert. I think this is my, my first time actually doing this. Spoiler alert for those people who are watching this because we're going to get into the movie, into the nitty gritty, 
and uh, we're gonna reveal some things so please watch barbarian or don't how, how about we just say it now watch barbarian ivan would you say watch barbarian if you like those type of movies oh god well watch barbarian and it will make this uh, podcast a lot more enjoyable or don't just listen to our ugly voices but ivan what did you think of barbarian it's good that was like your lowest is good of all time i tried i tried <laughs> there's like levels to good and yeah. ivan just went it's good it's like did a spit take he he looked like a an a, uh, obnoxious 17 year old girl who's like so fed up with her parents and they offered her like a thousand dollars for her graduation and she, she just like that's good i guess like i actually wanted a bentley but we're here mm-hmm. i guess i've been this movie was really good <laughs> so let's get into it let's go actually let's take a break Barbarian to me was a really good movie. Agree. You just said it was good. Hey. Shut up. <laughs> Don't bring up the past. <laughs> that was the old man. <laughs> uh I think this movie was really good um because it was not your typical horror movie. Get out of town. Fine. <laughs> but you have to pay me for relocation <laughs> fees. Okay. It's stay in time. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's just we. I've I was watching a horror film. I was watching a Orphan. Have you heard of that? The original one. And there's kind of like in horror films, you kind of see everything coming usually, especially ones that uh, are more. I would say like older ones. Mm-hmm. ones that were made after like 2000 or before 2010 i think recently we've seen an uptick in like people trying to do different things with horror but usually a typical horror film is kind of cookie cutter right and i think what makes this movie really good is it's always trying it's trying to be a horror film but it's always trying to be different in a way mm-hmm. it's trying to switch something up it's trying to subvert you primarily um is there something specifically why you think this movie is good or <laughs> what's your like your main one key takeaway or two or three um it's good at what it's trying to do it's good at what it's trying to do uh-huh but 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 sweat baby you gotta sweat (laughs) it feels like still nothing new and i see that it does try to subvert at times but also like subverting is also kind of feels done in Mm -hmm. its own way because i was watching i was like okay because now i'm at the point like if i watch a horror movie like this like no way they can just do the normal stuff yeah like they now they have to subvert i would say i agree with you but i'm okay with maybe not subvert but tie in something else like another theme into it Mm -hmm. or another idea not just i don't want to see uh halloween ends right okay or i don't want to just see a movie that is cookie cutter right I want to see if you're going to do cookie cutter, infuse something into it. A little message you want? Yeah, a message, at least. But you're right. It's You should be at that point where it's like, mm-hmm. we want something more. But like, I mean, I don't know specific examples of these horror movies, but I'm sure these horror movies were also metaphors for like women violence in some way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in a way, like you could argue that this does it worse because it gives you like the, the message in your face, but it's also like an. Im- I also feel like an important message should be in your face. Right. You know. Yes. You shouldn't really hide behind your symbolism and metaphor if it's like, treat people good. So you like, hate. Um. 
Nope. You hate uh, Jordan Peele. The mm. king, the master of symbolism. Um, a little. <laughs> hate him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't so bad with Nope, but the other ones felt like there's a lot of symbolism just to like have symbolism, not like us yeah whereas nope it did feel like a little more classic jaws where like they're just a monster but you could relate that to like black struggle or whatever it was mm. about i don't remember <laughs> um hollywood um, yeah th- sure um but for like the dummies it's obvious that it's hollywood i know that it's for the dummies they think it's they think nope is just like an alien movie. Yeah. For the smarties, they see the, the Hollywood. Yeah. And that's for everyone. And for the hotties? They don't watch it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, essentially, you think this movie is good. It's technically good. Oh, no. The worst kind of good. The worst kind of good. Actually, I don't, I don't agree with that. Mm. I think a movie... That it's technically good when it's like it hits all the right notes, mm-hmm. but this doesn't try to hit all the right notes. What would be the right notes? Like having a more direct plot and more jump scares. Okay. Because uh, we can get into it now. Like uh, I said it at the top that this movie is uh, really about subversion. And for... <laughs> Well, it starts off like a classic horror film, right? A girl walks up, up to a shady house in a shady neighborhood, and she's trying to spend the night at a double-booked Airbnb. There's a creepy guy there. Well, he he looks kind of normal, but he has creepy vibes. But the, like, the point of him was like, oh, he's definitely... The, yes. But they did that to sub- subvert. Yes. But it's like the whole movie's in a way like that, so I just got tired of... like the subversion because i kind of knew this wasn't what it's gonna be Uh uh-huh so it's like a double prediction but i still was kind of surprised in my own way just because i didn't know for sure right but like i'm just planning like oh how are they gonna subvert the the what's the word the trope this time yes and they keep doing it yeah which is like it's good but i don't care about that anymore well would you would you want the opposite of that? Would you just want them to stick with I think that's like the X, trope, isn't it? Yeah, X was more trope. I I think either way, I hate it. <laughs> uh huh. Is it like the maybe it's just genre that you hate? Well, I like Midsommar. No, I mean that genre of horror. No, I mean genre in general. Like you don't like romantic comedies. No, I <laughs> mean. I was just what I was. I watched this a while ago, but I saw it reminded me a lot of it, and I was watching scenes of it. Uh, Crazy Stupid Love. Have you seen it? No, but I. I it's super good, and it's from like rom- romantic comedy. Ryan. Yeah. The Gosler. The Gosler and the Carellster. Carellster. Emma Stonester. The Stoner. <laughs> the Stoner. <laughs> uh, it's good. good. Yeah, and I mean, I think probably the best romantic comedy because it's like no super okay not the best you could have west side story if that's what you want to do romantic comedy (laughs) bro (laughs) but it's one of the better ones because it's i don't want to say universal i mean i guess it is it's universal and that like i think literally anyone could watch this and have a good time and like the girly girls will watch this like oh cute story mm. the guy guys will watch this like ryan gosling's cool yeah he's funny yeah Big girl's funny whereas like this horror one it's kind of it's just horror no this movie has comedic elements but it's like not things i like it's like stuff i've seen before i guess i mean I don't know. I think you, when something is very close to the Pure. to a genre, mm-hmm. you you tend to push back. You want a little bit of everything. Want a combination. Yeah, that's the future. Yeah, and I I see that. 
I agree with that. Okay. Because I, I don't like going into a movie feeling like I already know what the movie's about mm -hmm. or knowing the beats. But on the flip side, I do like going to a, a movie and just turning my brain off. That's and what Marvel movies are for. That's I think it's a lot of it is that I don't like this genre of horror at all. Like just pure like there's a scary thing. There's tension, the music ramps, and then the music stops. They think they're safe. And then they get hit. Yeah. Like I it's they do that in the movie a lot. Yeah. And that type of horror is just not something I like. Fair. But like a Marvel movie, I could easily just watch that three point zero movie, <laughs> turn my brain off and be happy. You know? It's slowly going to like two point seven five. Yeah. Point. But yeah, I I know what you mean. So it's just a personal preference. It's yeah, it's preference, but I mean, I say these about the Marvel movies I I'm stupid about. I'll be like, well, it was pretty stupid. They did this, but, but you I liked it. it but fun. you liked it. You liked those more than because it was like my taste. Yes, like just in general. Yes, uh, I I could see that, and I I I don't I don't pity the fool, as they say. No, I don't pity the fool. <laughs> Back to your, uh, we were talking about like the initial subversion of thinking that the Bill Scars or is it Bill? Scarsguard, bro. The Bill Scarsguard character was going to be the baddie, mm -hmm. and he's giving all these bad vibes. He was stupid. That's what I hated. Let me just go down there and see. Let well, let's keep going on that track, like, because then Tess also the the main character in this film also is making horrible choices. Yes. As far as like. The choices you see in horror films, right? Like opening the wrong door, going down the wrong hallway. When she said nope. Yeah. I was like, what the? That's kind of creepy. Yeah, it was. I don't know. And, but I heard a good point on the internets where they were saying, you have to understand too that in horror movies, the person doesn't know that they're in a horror film. I would. I mean. Like when you. And I think this is sort of exemplified too when we see um, the AJ character come, mm -hmm. and his reaction is complete opposite with to the to the dungeon and to the hallway, and it's basically like, oh damn, I could tell this. But still, like I felt like nobody like that really exists. Where they see this dungeon, they see this freaky room with the camera, bloody print, and they're like, square footage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I think that's also what Zach is. Uh, he's bringing in his past comedic. Uh, I hate Justin Long. You do? Yeah. It's funny because we were talking about him uh, previously. But uh, let me just finish this point. Zach is br uh, the director, Zach Kreger. He's bringing in his own talents as far as like, I don't want to just make a horror film. I want to make this kind of funny too. And AJ, uh, uh, played by Justin Long, I think brings that. Why don't you like just along though? Um, I just don't like him. Like I don't like him. We were talking about him last week, remember? We were talking about uh the commercials. The Microsoft commercial. Oh yeah. And that they should bring him to do the Apple. I forgot that was him though. Maybe that's why I hate him. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, uh Tess and um dang, I need to remember this dude's name. Tess and Keith. They're making these bad choices and the whole time you would think and you feel like, don't do this, Tess. Keith is like setting you up or maybe like, yeah, maybe Keith is in trouble, but why are you following uh, him? Like, don't do this. And then the movie pulls off the big first subversion, which is like they kill Keith, which you would think is like one of the main characters. And they subvert in another way where they start introducing the AJ character halfway through the film. Mm -hmm. which you usually don't see and the fact that when you get the not only are you introduced to a character but it's a whole different kind of mood instead of gloomy detroit you're in uh sunny la to a guy singing along to a song um i think that's it's bold and it's kind of what you're asking for like something different i know it's not completely different that mm -hmm. Uh, that you want i think uh, uh, a mo 
maybe something that you would actually want is like let's not let's switch this movie from a horror film to a comedic film and that's probably more of your up your alley pause go um um i think there's ways to make it blend the comedy and horror in ways where it's not like moments of horror and moments of comedy because <clears throat> i'm thinking of american psycho where you can interpret the movie as literally being a comedy or literally being horror the whole time it just depends who watches it and how you react to it but like it's the same script same everything whereas like this is comedy and horror uh-huh the blend yeah where like there's horror moments and I think maybe like the only funny horror moment was when they were like getting breastfed. Yeah, that was funny. But also, I don't, I'm not into like just straight up disgusting to be disgusting. Yeah. Or gore to be gore. Yeah. In ways to like make you uncomfortable. Because it feels like, it feels simple or like easy just to be as gross as possible. I, they could have gone way more gross, dude. That was, that yeah. wasn't that bad. I mean, yeah, but I just think we're a little past this type of horror in general. You are. I think that's the difference. Because you, you have a, a different kind of, uh, how do you say? Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi to you. <laughs> Your musk is a little different than more hon, hon. most musks. You just, you, you don't like this you don't like cookie cutter stuff. You don't like the easy way. You like more complex, nuanced things. But you have to understand that there's a bunch of dummies out there, including me, that love films that are very genre tied. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you see that? Like, and I think that's that is art like if everyone's trying to make like the most uh melange type of movie it's like you don't have to be like super kubricky about anything it's just like if you're gonna be a comedian be like make the most iconic comedy of all time if you're gonna be horror make the most iconic horror of all time i wouldn't want to settle for like well i've seen this done in that way i see a little spin i could do it won't be the best ever. I mean, you could do that too. I'll probably do that in my life in some way. But I think there should be a bigger goal of I need this like iconicness. Yes, but not everyone has the capabilities of doing that. Then they should give up. No. Until they can. No. Uh, an artist should be able to create whatever they want, whether that's, um, what's the word? Um, what's the word when it's like the same thing? Redundant? I guess, yeah, there's another word. Whether it's redundant or whether it's genre pushing as a Kanye West or a Kendrick album. But I think anyone can do it if they're really, like, in touch with who they are. And you could be a dummy and know, like, what your lane is. And you can make the best, like, simple children's book that's like, oh, this is, like, the best children's book I ever read. I mean, I can make one as good or even better. But, like, this guy, he did his best. And he's in his lane. So, in your, ha, what would the perfect little horror film be for you? With, and it with it, without it being like genre pushing, just like give me a great horror film that you love. So, like, you want me to like an alien sort of thing? It could be anything. Anything that you think is like a good horror film just needs to hit these notes. Uh well, it's tough because once they do hit the notes, like the alien, like alien, it's like, I would say that is kind of perfect. But now if you do that again, like he already did it perfectly. And that's, I guess that's my point too. Like as an artist, you should be able to make the same thing again. Yeah. And you're saying you're, you're judging art mm -hmm. harshly if they've, if you've already seen it before where in fact most art is that 
Well, start is just redundant. But uh, as long as you say it with your voice, I don't think it'll ever be redundant. I think this is his voice. Then he's stupid. No. <laughs> <laughs> I heard of whitest people, you know? Uh-huh. And I've heard it like high praises for that. Yeah. And I'm like very confident that's like his best work ever. And I remember I've seen like skits of it and it's like legitimate, like hilarious. Yeah. Like this dude knows what he's doing. Like, I don't know how much this director was a part of that, but like just that itself is like super simple, but because they knew exactly what they're doing and they're like right in their lane, they're doing it hard. Like that's their iconicness. Well, how about this? Um, what if this is someone's first attempt at a rodeo? Because this is his real first solo movie that he's directed. Mm -hmm. Will you give him a pass for being a first-time director? Maybe mm. maybe he, this is his foot in the door, and now he can I mean, be more confident and pitch his own ideas. Sure, but still, I feel like I would really value value someone like me who says, I've seen this in some way. And I would try to interpret that so, like, I would be able to improve. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, you could just say, oh, you're first time. You're good. And you don't really learn from that. But if you have, like, the guy who sucks who says, this was in this movie, severity and expectations old. Yeah. This, then you go, like, that's true. That's true. That's true. Or that's not true. So you're not saying them, like, you s I guess... You are right. You're not saying this movie's bad. You're just saying do better. Yeah. When the movie transitions uh, from introducing AJ uh, up to the point where AJ himself gets trapped in the basement, um, and then when the movie transitions again to introducing how this basement came to be, and then back to uh, the plight that AJ and Tess are going through, I think this movie... Is doing it's doing the editing and the pacing extremely well you in a different film they would it would take longer for AJ to get to the basement mm -hmm. but you're in from meeting AJ for him to and then all the way for him to get into the basement it's like 10 minutes mm -hmm. and I love that about this film that it doesn't try to do something um, too slow it's quick it's uh, to the point and even like the fact that it doesn't show everything that's happening in the basement like how this uh creature came to be how uh, they built the basement the the father figure you know mm -hmm. and there's a lot of like unanswered questions which i like because like you can just imagine what happened and you don't need a lot of things explained and i th i think that's one of the things that craig is doing uh well is just the pacing of the movie um Let's talk about the creature in this film, the mother. A beauty, uh, if I've ever seen one. A true uh, Renaissance painting exquisiteness. Perfect broad. A frau to, of all fraus. She is probably like six foot five um, with no clothes on, mm -hmm. pale as the moonlight, mm -hmm. long stringy black hair. Mm-hmm. And she wants to feed her two babies, Tess and AJ, with her boobies. Mm -hmm. One of the most, probably the most disturbing thing to me, there, there's two scenes, but I think one's more disturbing to, than the other. The, I think the obvious one is when the mother's feeding, trying to feed AJ from her breast, and he's like, no, please. <laughs> but I think the even more disturbing one is when she's trying to feed them with a baby bottle, and... It's a thing that I really appreciate. I don't know how, I don't know who to give credit, but I'm just going to give it to Zach uh, Krieger, where the baby bottle is the ugliest baby bottle you've ever seen. Like the, what is it, the chupon? How do you say that in, in <laughs> English? The, the nipple. The nipple. It's just like a brown gargantuan style one that like he used to feed like elephants or something. And it's like, ugh. You do not want to be drinking from that thing. Um, but, yeah. 
when when uh the movie first started or even when they were in the basement what did you think was gonna happen or what did you think the big bad was i should say Mm, i didn't really know because i went and i just read like synopsis like girl goes to bmb and she bargain gets more than what she bargains for right um i was i was thinking um scars guard was part of it yeah because he was so stupid yeah i was like uh he has to be like baiting her in but then he just ended up being really stupid yeah it's like okay so just this lady this monster is in there and that's the issue i thought um like once i saw the the second tunnel mm-hmm. that led even further down into the to hades um i thought it was going to go like a uh, uh, witch or like ghosty or i thought it was gonna be like castle no um cabin in the woods i haven't seen it oh uh, but you know about it no it's a, uh, it's like a horror movie but it's like a an experiment they put people in the cabin and then the people there's like people from a company like in suits and stuff should you be telling me this i want to watch it Are you it's old now it's kind of your fault Okay, keep going. People in suits. Well, I, I just thought there would be like uh, the bad guy would be someone behind like a mirror. Ah, okay. Like a real person. Gotcha, like, gotcha. Ooh, gotcha. test subject is doing horribly. Yeah. Um. And and then like the last really the last part of the subversion is like that the mother is actually just the most loving character in the whole film, and that AJ is more the true monster. Uh, the fact that you feel like he's going to have this redemptive arc to his character and then he ends up betraying Tess. It's just, it's kind of, I think it, it makes the movie better. The fact that you don't go down the cookie cutter route and like, yeah, let's, let's help each other to escape this evil monster. Mm-hmm. But you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I I liked that, but like. Maybe because I hated him so much, I never wanted him to get better. I was like, this guy, I hope he dies. Did you like his death? I mean, yeah, it was, it was pretty gross. Like, head ripped in half. But I kind of expected it when he tossed her over. I was like, oh, so he's going to die. Because like, he just did something so evil. Yeah. The movie's not going to end with him living. Yeah. That wouldn't be politically correct. Right. Like, this man has to suffer now. Um, Yeah. And he dropped the gun. That's when I was like... 0.25 down. <laughs> Lost it. Good job. I love the scene when they're, and I knew it was going to happen. They're in um, the homeless hideout. And the homeless oh, yeah. the homeless guy was like, yeah, she never comes out. I'm surprised she's never found me in here. I was like, <laughs> when he was saying that, like, no way they're going to do that. No I, way she's going to break through right now. That's why I like, that's why I really like this film too. Cause it's funny. It's trying to, it's, yeah. and Back to like my very first question, which I can answer now, like, is this movie a satire on horror? I don't think it is, but it's always like pushing that. Like it knows all the beats of a horror film, An and it's kind of accidental satire. Uh, because I've seen like that gag in like Rick and Morty. Yeah, we're like we're safe here, Rick. Yeah, nothing will hurt. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like that's funny because they kind of meant it, but in this one, I don't know. Like, he definitely meant that. He like, but it it just feels out of tone. It doesn't to me because like, even when they were feeding, when uh, everything seemed funny to me. Maybe that's a sadistic thing for me to say, but like, there's right. things in the film that it's always like, oh my god, oh my, like it, it makes felt me laugh. funny. But like, I was laughing at it, not with it. We're like an American Psycho. I was laughing with it. Okay, that's a good point. But I think, I don't. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. Horde does tend to make me laugh because it's so like ridiculous, mm-hmm. but I think Zach knew what he was doing there. But also, like, because you could know when you're being unfunny, and people sometimes are unfunny on purpose for the joke. Yes. So maybe he intentionally knew, like, this isn't funny because I've seen this a million times, but it's funny because I'm actually doing it. Yeah. Like I, I don't like that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I have taste, okay? 
And they better be satisfied. Mm-hmm. Immaculate. Um, yeah, I think it it's not quite a satire, but it's always touching its fingers across that. It's always straddling the line, as they say. What was your question? Who is who is a barbarian meant for? Is that your question? Yeah. The just the the, the classic horror movie fans. If you I like classic horror, you're gonna be titillated by this. <laughs> I think horror movie fans will think this movie is like one of the best horror movies. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, it's different from the other horror movies that I've seen. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And that's that's cool. Like uh, they have a new favorite horror film. <laughs> for them <laughs> i have a new york times review for you right on me this is by beatrice loyaza Kreger sets up dozens of cliches and pulls pulls them in genuinely surprising directions oh. brandishing his touchstones american horror films of the 80s and 90s in the vein of Wes craven the scares are tempered by a comic punching back courtesy of justin long as a sleazy hollywood director who pays a visit to his Detroit property after sexual assault charges drain his bank account. Krager isn't concerned with making bold political points as he is with orchestrating a snappy spectacle that goes a mile a minute. Hashtag Me Too gentrification, the brutal underbelly of the Reagan era. All these elements fit like puzzle pieces into a broader nightmare that lets the context, context speak for itself. Barbarian is all the more creepy and fun because of it. So, she, I agree you, with her. Yeah, she's saying essentially that there's a bunch of cliches that he's playing with, and he's literally playing with them. He's not exactly playing into them. Mm-hmm. He's playing with the ideas of them, and he's uh, he's in control of the movie. And I agree. I agree, but but my favorite word. Big butt? Can't lie. Okay. I think I could say like her word, her review word for word, and like put a negative spin on that. Like I could interpret the cliches as like a bad thing. And that's all kind of opinion. Yep. Taste. Taste. One word. One word. One key word takeaway from this podcast. Taste. Taste. Uh, Ivan, let's review this movie. Out of five uh, nipples, uh, is it nipples or baby bottles? Out of five baby bottles filled with uh, 30-year-old, or how old do you think this mother is? 40, 30, 35. Out of five baby bottles filled with mutated breast milk, how many five mutated bottles of baby breast milk is this? On the wall, five is... uh, Take one down. Pass it around. Five. Three point twenty-five. Jesus Christ. There's moments like when they transferred to Justin Long, it like went up by like point five. I was like, all right, we're getting somewhere. Like this is different, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then like Justin Long became himself, or like <laughs> I just didn't like him. And then this, how cliche things were how like it was like a movie or a horror movie i mean uh uh-huh. just it went down to 0.25 4.25 out of five <laughs> baby bottle breast milks i think <coughs> this movie is a horror film i think uh but it's a horror film that does things with a twist and it's um all the better for it What's next for Zach Krieger? He's making, he's he's working on a bunch of projects. I'm not too sure. I'm interested. I can say that I am interested. I am interested, Ivan. Um, well, that's it for uh, the movie Barbarian. Now let's get into a section we like to call things and such. We need to give uh, credit where credits due. Succession won for best drama at the Emmys. Let's give a round of applause for that. 
Succession proving to uh, our listeners that we have good taste and we know the best show on TV and Succession is just that. Uh, carrying on. Maxine. Maxine, spelled with three X's, is the final film in the trilogy for uh, the movie that um, that started with X. Oh, my God. Yes. There's another? There's another, Ivan. Jesus. So Pearl is coming out next week, uh, or in a couple of days, I should say. This is torture. And then uh, T. West is on a roll because he's like, I see so much in this character and he's gonna make maxine which follows um the character that uh, escaped from the movie x and her travels into los angeles is that who pearl was pearl is the one that died is the the mother no the, but like she plays yes, pearl yep, yep i think it's it's cool that he's like he has like he's on this binge you know, right? Like this creative uh, ecstasy is like I see so much here, and yeah. I'm just interested. Like I, I want to see Pearl just to see what he does with that, and I want to see this to be like, okay, so what do you exactly do you see in all this? It's just interesting. Mm-hmm. Move over, Elvis, because Priscilla is getting her own movie directed by Sofia Coppola, her brought name. to you by from A24. Jacob Alordi, known for his roles in Euphoria, will be playing Elvis. And a girl that I've seen in a show called uh, Mayor of Easttown is playing Priscilla. Ivan, are you at all interested to see the woman take on the man that you love? No. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, I'll watch it, but I'm not excited. Like, I'm not like, yes, this is amazing news. Well, you weren't for Elvis. So imagine once he's here, you'll be yeah. like, I'm all Priscilla, baby. Where's the Priscilla album? Priscilla! (laughs) Have you got any Elvis uh, merch yet? No, it's all ugly. Okay. And I think this is going to be a big one. So, yeah. D23 was last week. Bunch of things announced. I'm going to name the things and we can stop at uh, the ones that you find interesting or ones that you have like quip on. Because we know Ivan has a bunch of quips in him. Uh, We'll start from the bottom. Avatar Way of the Water. They showed a a 3D preview and they said it was amazing. Are we going to watch Avatar 1 in theaters? Uh, Yeah, most likely. There we go. Uh, On the animation side, uh, Pixar specifically, we have Inside Out 2. Not directed by the original director, so that's kind of sad. There's Elemental... Uh, Elio and win or lose. Um, I feel like Pixar is getting too big. It's turning out too fast. Yeah. Um, and I get it. Like you have a lot of voices, you have a lot of talent and you want to make things good, but Pixar was good, was great initially because you had like 10 masters who were all like spit firing ideas, but now Pixar is probably like a, thousand person company with 500 people that have ideas you're not going to get as good as content you know i think they just got to slow down and like realize they're kind of like the apple of studios animation yes and they should realize like our like the longer they take the more people respect them but if they keep just churning out things, it's gonna feel like they're just they're just DreamWorks basically. But they they have to do this. They're they're owned by Disney. I know, but they're slaves. Disney should see. Disney won't see. Disney should see. I think it's up to a new studio to now take their place. Taking the reins. Cause like, well, what what you want and it's what I want too is a more auteur type of film. And. At the pace they're going, they're not going to get that. Yeah. Like uh, Brad Bird, he's making uh, a movie. His make his next movie is going to be for Pixar's rival. It's uh, the one that John Lasseter went to. DreamWorks? Uh, no, it's uh, I Blue think Sky. Sky. Sky Blue da- Sky? Something like that. So he's making his next film over there instead of Pixar, which is interesting. They should get like actual directors like 
uh, imagine like Tarantino with Pixar or something like that. Like just not rely on these animation directors and like branch out and like say, let's just get a, a normal director and see what he does. Gore. Read my mind. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on, baby. Um, uh, I I kind of disagree with that just because like not all directors are meant to do that, but I mean they'll ask and they could say no. It's not <laughs> like Tarantino here's ten trillion dollars. You can't say no to this. Like us humble amount of money where like a good director will take it just because of the challenge, not the money. If they want to, I agree. Yes. Uh, Disney. So Little Mer- Little Mermaid live action, Snow White live action, Mufasa, which is sequel to Lion King or prequel, but it's directed by Barry Jenkins, which is, which is very interesting. I want to, s- I feel like this might be better, but because Barry Jenkins is a great director. He made Moonlight for God. I feel like it's going to be another um, Eternals situation. Oof, another- yeah. Uh, Lion King by what's the dude from Iron Man? John Favreau. Mm-hmm. Like both good directors, but John, don't tell me John Favreau. He's guy. good. He's like adequate. That's good enough. Just because he made your favorite movie of all time, Iron Man, doesn't mean anything. It means everything. Oh, Haunted Mansion, uh, coming out soon. Peter Pan, Disenchanted. I'm what I, I told Tanya the other day. My my lovely wife. My Frau. Fraulein. Frau. You know what Frau is? German for like girlfriend. Wife. Uh, obviously, she's not my girlfriend, Ivan. You were at my wedding. Oh, my God. Go on. Let's watch a horror. Uh, sorry. Let's watch a Disney movie. And she's like, okay. We watch, We started watching Enchanted. Uh, Good movie. Yeah. It's like. Uh, Self-aware. It's self-aware, but it's also like it has singing parts, Mm -hmm. but the singing parts make you laugh because you're like, why is she singing right now? Love it. Um, What do you think about that? They're going full live action. They're just like churning out old classics. Um, I think it's the wrong way. Like Disney was founded on animation. I feel like. They should have like a very core animation line where it's like just like their own Pixar, but like Disney innovating animation as hard as they possibly can and like just branching out hard. That and they all should they also should be creating original stories if they do live action like they need their own. Don't make Snow White. Make like your own live action princess movie that's unique. Mm-hmm. That way, people don't compare it. Yeah, it might not make as much money, but you're pushing it, you know. And you're gonna have hit and misses, but you have more chances of a big hit mm-hmm. that people like. Star Wars, The Mandalorian season three is coming out. Did you watch season one or two? I think I watched both. But I don't really remember them. Baby Yoda's back after being taken away by Luke in the l- end of season two. Is he older now? No. I'm just interested that he's back because I thought he was never going to come back. But I think the show doesn't work without Baby Yoda. <laughs> and uh, it's a good choice. And I'm actually excited for this because Mandalorian is actually a really good, like... uh, Western. Yeah, just... Neo Western. No, Ivan. Neo don't. Western. It's just a good genre movie uh show. Sure. Sure. And it's the best Star Wars has right now. Yeah. Uh Oaska is gonna come out. Bless you. <laughs> and lastly, which I think I have high hopes for this. Skeleton crew. It's um John Watt, the director from Spider Man movies. It's his own uh Star Wars series, TV show. Live action? Yeah. And he quit Fantastic Four for this. So there must... He he seems like a good director. He seems like he has a good head on his shoulders. And this could be big. And it's about, uh like, 
Jude Law protecting younglings like throughout galaxy like they're just traveling he's like a jedi they are jedi they're like tiny jedis baby jedis no i mean jude law no he's not pass wow really i want lightsabers what if the these guys te- end up growing up to be the the future don't you think about that yeah. what if they're carrying little lightsabers Little baby lights. Yeah. Here. And they're using little baby force. Wouldn't that be cool? Getting a little cupcake from the cookie jar. Isn't that exciting? But I just want lightsabers. What if they have it? They're not going to be like Anakin and Obi-Wan at the end of episode three. But they're going to be the thing that leads to that. And it's going to be a fun story. Sure. I'll just. I'm glad this exists. So eventually we can get the real stuff. You see what I have to do to get Ivan excited? Jeez. I have to lay it out for him. Marvel, lastly, from D23. Werewolf by Night, which I think is pretty cool because it's like a going straight to Disney Plus. <laughs> and it's a horror, uh, horror-tinged horror Halloween special. Mm-hmm. A little comedy, maybe? Maybe, if you like. And I like it that it's like them doing something different because uh-huh. it's a character not often thought about when thinking about Marvel. Loki season two. No, okay. Echo. Armor Wars, Secret Invasion, The Marvels, Thunderbolts, and Captain America and WO New World Order. These are kind of like when I think about all uh from Echo all the way to Captain America and New World Order, I'm like boring. The fact that like the next slate of Marvel uh, movies and shows seem very boring is kind of scary. Because, like, I don't know. I'm not interested in Thunderbolts. I'm not interested in the Marvels. I'm not interested in Secret Invasion, Armor Wars, Echo. The only way I will like it is if it ends up being good. But for me to be excited about it, I'm not excited. I think Marvel is is kind of done. There it is, people. Yeah. Big takeaway is? That's it. Oh. Live with that fact. Why are they done? I just think there's a general, like... Malaise? Yeah. There's just too much to watch now. I I mean, I'll watch the movies, but I don't... I feel like I don't want to watch, like, these shows that are coming out now. It's interesting because when I was watching Enchanted yesterday on Disney Plus, I'm a kind of like a Disney geek in a way, or my wife isn't. And I was like, I can't wait till we have a kid because all I'll be watching is Disney. And we'll be watching like these corny movies that I can't get enough of. And saying that, it makes me realize that Marvel will never miss. Disney will never miss with all the mistakes they quote unquote mistakes they do because there's going to be an an audience of five to 10 year olds and 10 to 15 year olds that love all these things. Yeah. Where us will say that it's dead, but to us it's dead, but not to the kids. But I think they'll get scared that it's dying when it's not hitting like straight up a billion each time. It'll be like 800 million, which is still obviously good. But they're going to say like, oh, we got to change it up. And then they'll get scared and do something weird. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in a good way or in a good way. Yeah. Time for a section we like to call What's on the Telly? (laughs) House of the Dragon. Uh, The last episode I watched was when he beat the crab man. Oh, so you're not caught up. No. Um, I like the show. It's getting more character based character nuance without spoiling spoiling it for anyone i will say that i I saw a review that said that they didn't like this last episode because they sped up through some of the character relationship stuff Mm -hmm. making things not make complete sense as far as like character choices the the choices that the characters made and i think it's kind of tricky because like you have a show and then you have a book and you have to decide like things to cut out and 
you have to cut out things but the things you cut out can't be things that are pivotal for the character or you can't cut out things that make the character choices not make sense yeah and i do see a that happening in this episode where it's like it feels a little bit like oh that feels a little sped up but i still enjoyed it like it's still i think it's going to be a good show yeah i mean i think we're i have like multiple points but i think it does feel speed up sped up i haven't watched the most recent but i was kind of surprised that like how many time jumps they've done already i think it's like at least two or three mm-hmm. so like oh, okay sure yeah maybe like i don't know how much of the book that does it, i don't know how much the book does that maybe they do that too but i also think if they if the book does not cut and it's just straight up timeline or whatever like day by day sort of thing yes i think they are just wanting to cut a lot so they can get to like the meat yeah and maybe like the book doesn't get to the meat for like 2000 pages or whatever (laughs) you know what it might be a little ugly but i want to get there yeah maybe that's their mentality yeah Um, and i think it's too early to say if that's like good or not Uh uh-huh but we'll see yeah i think one of the 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 oddest things for me is that from the beginning of the show the showrunners and hbo were saying like we tried our best to um make the sexual scenes make sense like we don't want to be as barbaric gratuitous yeah gratuitous and we want to but we also know that back in that time it was like this in this fictional time it was like this and they're they're, they have a lot of things like we're trying to make things kind of more empathetic for the women but i think that's not how it's played out but even just saying that out loud is biting them in the ass because they're saying that to prevent the backlash that could happen Mm -hmm. when people watch it. But I think you just need to make your art and, and explain it. Yeah. Not say like this was filmed with great care or this was filmed with this in mind. I think ideally, yes, but there will be like the stupid people who don't understand the context and just see like, I'm sure there's people who watched the first episode and then, when they saw that he made, he killed his wife, basically, they're like, oh, cancel that, dude. Why would anyone watch such a horrible show? They don't get nobody watches it because they agree with that. And I guess that's my point. Like, people are going to complain no matter what. You know what you did. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know what you did. You know the work that you made. Yeah. You know how you made it. The people that were part of it know how you made it. Let yeah. that be the. The thing that speaks, not... Right. But I, also, I don't think there's too much harm in just saying, like, look, it's probably not that good of a thing to do, but I made it. They're not, like, each episode, this, 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 we don't agree with this, this, and this. And yeah. Because they do that, there's one episode of Mad Men where Roger does blackface, and then the start of the episode, like, during this time, this was allowed. Oh, really? This is a... And like I watched them, like okay, I I never needed that before. Yeah. But with new PC culture, I'm sure it's like nobody actually cares. I think most people get it. It's just that one percent who are super loud and don't get it. They're like, Roger, is a racist. Yeah. I mean he he was, but that's not why we like him. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I I watched Industry, the the latest episode. Oh. It's really good. Um, it went full Mad Men. They're starting their own um, agency. Agency, essentially. <laughs> it's it's like coming full circle, and I think, and it looks beautiful, mm-hmm. like a lot of the scenes. I just think it's it's. I've come like full circle on this show from thinking it's like the next great 
greatest thing to being like oh it's probably not that good to like it's great but it might not be the greatest i just respect it so much it's a good show uh excited to see what's next what have you watched um i finished Mad Men like a couple days ago oh god so good i almost wanted to rewatch it like right there because <laughs> like it goes by so quick now it just feels like a blip just because i remember so much of it but i still get stuff from it it's still delicious still nutritious though i'll say though like the last season feels like from the first episode they realized they had to wrap it up and there's like a few times where like it felt like this happened just so they would have a reason to give this character send off yeah but it's it's still like pretty decent reasons it's not like oh right stupid decision anything it's just like a little too quint too convenient right at times but i think don had like the perfect send-off i don't think he needed any fix at all he needs some fixings but he didn't need a fix to his character Mm -hmm. story it's a good show great show best show ever is it time for the marlon brando happy hour not this week i got lazy oh (laughs) 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 this is a pretty famous movie on the waterfront oh yeah i've heard of it i haven't watched it yet though okay i'll watch it i want color already it's (laughs) starting to get to me what else have you watched um uh, i'm gonna start watching like like nathan for you and the rehearsal Mm. like i'm gonna force it because i've seen the clips i was like that is so funny that's so good and i just want to watch it so bad but it's still scary just because it's like an awkward type of show yeah i'm gonna watch it i'm pretty sure it's like one of the top five shows ever for you in your taste i think no general no top five most important shows damn um let's move on to a section called really be busting <laughs> rest in peace P and B rock crazy it's crazy how many rappers are dying it's not even small ones anymore. Just a month passes. Like I've heard of this dude for yeah. a while. Yeah. And he, I thought he was kind of done with this, like the game, or whatever reason he died. Gang banging. Oh, I thought you said the game. I was like, the game died. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. yeah. Well, he got. Do you know why he got killed? Or how he got, he he was eating at Roscoe's chicken and waffles and someone tried to steal his jewelry and they shot him. So it wasn't even like that. It was just, he was out in public. Yeah. I think once, I think whenever these rappers get rich, they have to leave. Like no matter what. Leave. Wherever city they're from. I don't think it's that because he wasn't in the city he was from. I think when you are rich, you shouldn't flaunt it. And when you're in a situation where you're basically down, mm-hmm. you ha- you have to just admit defeat and not risk um, your life. Who knows if he was like trying to fight back, but I-, I doubt that the killer would steal the jewelry and then shoot him. You never know, but I think he was trying to steal the jewelry. He shot him to get the jewelry. And they did the tax. But they did that like as a gang. That was like an execution, right? Like they rolled up to him like a drive-by? I think they took his jewelry. Oh. Doesn't matter. Horrible stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like it's happening more and more often. And I think it's just, it reflects society where like it could happen at any moment to anyone mm-hmm. who has who has wealth. Yeah, I mean... Just the dangers of being rich itself and not, I mean, it's going to sound like I blame him, but just be more humble 
Not that that would have saved him. Maybe this was, like, no matter what, he would have been shot just because they wanted to shoot him. But if you have that money and you just have the jewelry, like, people who are, like, super poor and have these issues, they're going to just see that and they won't think at all. They're just going to want it. And if you... I think like there's two sides. You can either be humble or like if you're going to flaunt it, you need the protection. Yeah. You need like bodyguards if you're going to have a million dollars of jewelry on you. Yeah. Like Drake doesn't go anywhere alone. He has like <laughs> secret service with him. Yeah. Elvis too. How did that work out for him? Suicide. Any more music news? I have no music for you. I think I'm going to try to start listening to music, but. I have no nothing for you. I've been listening to less and less Kay. music. Okay. Let's leave it there. We might retire this and just like bring it out for like an album <laughs> when we're like 90 years old. Oh, Drake came out with an album. Crazy. Really be buzzing. Um, let's end this podcast with choosing which movie we're going to discuss. And I have a feeling I know which one you're going to choose. Actually, I don't. There's four movies. Confle- Confess Fletch. Sounds horrible. Starring John Hamm. You like that? Starring role. What's the... Give me a synopsis. Give me something. Okay. Confess Fletch. This is a good way to do this. Confess Fletch. The synopsis of this film starring John Hamm. While investigating a case of valuable stolen paintings... The roguishly, roguishly charming and endlessly <laughs> troublesome Fletch becomes the prime suspect in a murder. Oh, no. To prove his innocence, he must sift through a long list of suspects from an art dealer to a missing playboy to a crazy neighbor to his own girlfriend. It's like a reverse clue. Is it a comedy? Yep. Oh, my God. So this might be it, but let's, let's, I, I'm a judicious man. Okay. The Woman King. Pass. <laughs> so much for being a judicious <laughs> man. <laughs> Boo. That movie looks good though, I and know. I heard it's good. I l- I want to watch it just because I don't want to appear sexist. Okay, like, that's the biggest draw to me. Pearl. Next. <laughs> Moonage Dream Daydream. And what's that? What's that? You've seen the trailer uh, probably a bunch of times. Um. The David Bowie IMAX movie that's coming out. Like documentary? It's like, yeah, it's documentary-ish. Uh, so it's either Woman King or John Hamm. And John Hamm just happens to be a Woman King. That's kind of funny. <sighs> <laughs> I feel like this decision will dictate my life. Yep. Like, he really chose this this man over... The Woman King. Yep. But I'm choosing John Hamm. <laughs> All right. So next uh, week's movie is John Hamm. Our first movie with <laughs> the the, the Top great. Gun Top Gun Maverick. Starring role. Uh, Lead actor. Finally. It'll be interesting. I'm actually interested to see what he has. Like we know he has it, but how much of it does he have? There's a. Black Mirror episode I've been meaning to watch with him in it. Mm-hmm. I heard it's really good. Interesting. Um. All right. Well, that's it for the Lickless with the Bros. We'll be back next week with a movie review of Confess Fletch. Uh, shout out to our new viewers. We've been getting an uptick in viewers. Ivan, we've we've been hitting like around thirty views, but now we've gone to a hundred views in the past two. I mean, we're popular out here, right? And uh, yeah. shout out to our last guy who commented on our show. I'll give him a quick little plug here. Um, he said, do, 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 give me one second. He commented on the Jaws video. Let's go. And he said this. Or she. Lyndon CMP said on the Jaws movie, great discussion. Enjoyed that. The scene with Brody's son mimicking him at the table was spontaneous. The little boy did it himself off camera during a break in filming. And Scheider called Spielberg in and Spielberg asked the boy to do it again and decided to include it in the scene. Do you know what he's talking about? Yeah, with the the face. Well, that kind of ruined the movie for me. (laughs) 
thank you london cmp uh we we appreciate your comment um and yeah whoever else is watching leave a review of barbarian in the comment below we'll be back next week peace out bye